Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dan Hussey with AlkaDayTrader.com bringing you our New York session update. Sorry about that. I had a cough uh, for October 3rd, 2013. Speaking with the S&P 500, uh, pretty choppy day. Um, all in all, was a down day for the S&P 500. Um, have had a full Globex short trade and the 77.75s. Uh, resistance um, hold here. We've broken longs uh, against this level and um, <clears throat> ultimately um, are looking for continued downside now. We've also broken, going out to a four hour chart, the full halfway back long now drawn from the 1624.75 lows to highs. Well, you know, is it broken? Is it not? It kind of hit a 61.8 line, so I guess I'm going to put that back up and not really consider it totally broken yet. Even though it did go one tick in, um, it definitely got a reaction off that level, so um, we'll see what happens. Okay, um, on to the dollar yen. Thanks for waiting there. Um, from a larger perspective, um, as always, you know, like we've been talking about, this looks like a much larger range, and it's going to be very hard to uh, catch anything inside of this range. So we have to be vigilant. Um, kind of note that there was a 618 line. Um, there are a couple swing high to lows here. We can look for resistance. Um, going down to four hour chart probably shows it the best um, we have a <clears throat> our resistance levels are 97.40s 97.80s and 98.30s a uh, break of any of these 61.8 lines at the 97 you know 50 97 or 98 figure or 98.60s could result in an ambush long in the direction of this much larger wedge as we are seeing this as kind of a um, you know, each each one of these swing highs and lows is a new inside high or low. So um, this could be the low end of this range that may take us up and into, uh, you know, f to find resistance. And eventually we're going to anticipate the breakout, excuse me, breakout of this um, uh, much larger wedge formation. Um, but until then, uh, you know, we still have what is basically a uh, triangle still playing out. And this could be A, B, C, D in a completed E wave, but there's no way of really confirming that without a break in one of these shorts. And then, you know, take the shot then at the ambush long for a, you know, run to a 108 target. But also looking over the idea that um, best viewable from a daily chart, you could have uh, the dollar yen pull back into the full long at the 90 figure. Um, that you know if, if we do continue lower from here that's that's ultimately what we're looking at we are in like 15 minute hourly and four hour shorts here um, and and that's what you have to be aware of that there are shorts here that have traded and are getting reactions while the long side is not so we'll see what happens in the uh, uh, into the after hours um, I shouldn't say isn't because a long, micro long here did get get a reaction as well uh, Euro yen very much uh, same picture we've been looking at probably best viewable on a four hour chart next in the series four hour chart has traded a full short off the prior highs is also holding from the 30 through 30 still and today we traded into a full long drawn from our 13140 uh, to 13320 anchor here uh, inside this level from 15 minute perspective we're also holding a full short so um, both sides get a reaction it's just pick your side get free and get ready for the ride uh, dollar yen or Aussie yen is is a little less clear from the short side. Not much is held. We look like we're in a wedge at lows, and that wedge could have continuation to the downside, particularly down to the excuse me down to the 90.50 support, which is where that full halfway back long is, best viewable on a four-hour chart. Or um, you know, really, I'm looking for anywhere between 90.50s to to you know 8950s uh, there's a 100 pip range that down here that we're, we could find support and ultimately we want to be buyers at so we're going to be a buyer down here um, we have orders in at the 9040 
90 uh, 45s and uh, or 90 50s rather front running it by a few pips um, so we are going to be looking to get that swing towards uh, at least the 96 figure um, gold today uh, same nothing's changed since this morning still inside that hundred dollar range between 1380s and 1280s um, so Pound yen from a four hour perspective, we have a 157.20 anchor to highs, which comes in at this is the next in the series long. Um, this long that I have drawn up really needs to, I really need to make this a purple one because it is a traditional after, um, which means we, you know, we wouldn't take it, and that's down to 161s. I'm really looking for the pound to trade down into the 160 figure. Um, That um that eventually could you know be the area of support that we then rally 300 or 400 close to 400 pips up to the 164 figure. Um, so again, it's a 157.20 anchor to highs here. Um, it traded once before to target same anchor new high now uh, 160 buy. Um, the euro US dollar has hit its upside targets of the 136.20s. We've it's been a month since the the entry level traded and now we've got um, a couple levels of support and the two I'm most interested in are this 60 minute next in the series extension long which is very simply the same anchor new high of the prior extension drawn from a 133.90 or 87 anchor to high um, traded the long and went to targets now same anchor new high uh, has the entry at a one. 35.17. We're going to front run by 3-4 pips by the 135.20s. Stop below 134.86. Target of 137. First targets are going to be right around the 135.50, 135.44, 45 area. The other area of interest is the 240 minute next in the series long. The prior trade uh, went to targets. Uh, now next in the series drawn from uh, the entry lows at 13104s to target highs is a 33.75. So, you know, uh, I, I like the idea. Try for the hourly extension. Hopefully, it gets free. That's all we care about. If it goes to target and we run higher, great. We won't uh, have missed the trade. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be looking to get back in on our four-hour series of longs that we already traded to a target, um, the 13375 area too. So. 133.75 and 135.20, two major support levels. Once in a blue moon, and this would be an absolute gift of the euro, is if it decided to pull into a daily full halfway back long, drawn from our entry lows of our prior swing, daily swing lows, which come in at a 127.40, two highs, and that's this 240-minute uh, full halfway back. Um, a move down to 132 from here, I say it's a would be a gift just because it is you know buying for 132 means you're looking for now a 600 pip target and ultimately could take it all the way to that 141. So there's potentially 900 pip profit objective for what is really only 120 pips risk. I mean, you can't ask for eight to one uh, risk reward ratio option um, chances very often not saying it will happen I think one of the other two levels would hold far before then um, just looking at this chart we have you know prior highs here we have a prior high uh, support level that it was broken support now uh, or was resistance now is support and you can see how coming down into this 240 minute long is pra practically trade um, retesting of this kind of confluence level this this uh, relative uh, area of uh, support here where we had uh, prior highs um, so um, that is the major support area once we get down into 134 and we'd be looking for the 3375s you know 
Market takes a 25 pip dip through a, a big 34 figure, runs some stops below there. I think uh, that makes sense to me if we do get down there. But uh, I'm really, in my opinion, and what I've seen historically is that the euro, once it starts going in extensions, it'll just start going. So we need to be ready for this 135.20 area um, because if history is any indicator for the euro, um, it will probably not even trade down to the 134s. It'll just trade 135.20 and then it's off to the races up to 141s. You know, um, if we do break out and we do continue higher in the euro. Um, we need to mark this prior high here um, because uh, I'm marking this prior high just so we are aware that that's the prior high that we'll start using for our extensions uh, if we do you know really start continuing higher because we are technically above uh, targets now and you know we get to that 13675 objective we're going to be looking for new extensions drawn from this 3570 uh, 30, 30, anchor to you know highs, um, which uh, you know very well could could be already starting. So um, I'm not going to be too aggressive. I'd want that hundred pit pullback, and then you know we'll go from there. Um, the Aussie U.S. dollar. Aussie US dollar, um, unlike its dollar yen counterpart, is actually holding this hourly this hourly short uh, at this one at this 94 uh, 94 uh, figure. So, uh, with that being said, and under the premise that we are in fact looking for it to trade back into 92s, holding this short off of highs makes sense uh, and trading down into 92, while the Aussie yen can trade down into its 90 to 90 50 support. Um, and then, yeah, pay me. But then we'll see what happens from there. But right now, uh, to me, this looks like the um, Aussie U.S. dollar needs a nice C wave down, uh, kind of run all those bulls out of the market, so that a new wave of bulls can pick the market up from a better support level, and then uh, potentially can you know take a and start a trend into the end of the year and would very likely carry through to next year um, higher. So we'll see what kind of volatility plays out uh, we know we're looking for the potential for the S&P lower um, and uh, we'll see what happens The Euro Aussie definitely in longs here, without a doubt. Um, from a four hour perspective, we've come up off of this 42.50 support, pulled into the 30, uh, 43.80 support. Uh, 43.80 support. We have 46.50 uh, upside targets, currently all in the direction of a swing towards 154. Um, so any continuation of the Euro Aussie higher, we would need to see that Aussie US dollar fall faster than the Euro US dollar if we're going to get both of them in a pullback here. Um, but yeah, so um, that's all. Uh, you know, I haven't looked at the 10 year um, in, you know, very, very recently, but it's pretty clear the 10 year is starting. Um, has been uh, really testing this um, extension short trading up into a 618 line of it it is still valid so um, you know while the 10 year keeps pressing higher that's going to put a lot of pressure on that dollar yen and um, the the trend here was clear uh, there was a series of longs that was trading um, and that series looks like it's trying to break out of target still so there's still a valid next in the series long that really hasn't traded here, um, but we could, we very well could potentially be beginning extension longs here, um, which uh, look like today, well, we haven't traded into that support, so we'll have to monitor that closely. But 
We are still in this larger short, but there is a series of longs that is most definitely still working. So, um, anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, still not feeling a hundred percent, but uh, we'll be. Uh, um, there are uh, there are some big changes coming. Um, actually, November first will be the date that we're very likely mark our big change. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. It means a lot more. You guys will be benefiting from this change and getting a lot more and a lot of new analysis that, um, in terms of uh, Elliott Wave and um, some other stuff. So, I think you guys will be very excited. I would be excited if I was you um, for the changes that are coming November 1st we just have to finalize them um, but uh, we are looking to expand Elgo Day Trader and um, without giving away too much information it means some good changes that you guys will um, and some good opportunities that you guys will have in your uh, to add to your tool belt so um, in terms of subscriptions and products and services what you get now everything stays the same you'll just be getting more in addition to it so um, with that being said have a great night everybody and we'll be back with you as price action develops